Arun Gupta. I'm a student at the Middlesex County Academy for Science, Math, and Engineering Technologies. I'm going to be going to college next year at Carnegie Mellon, and I'm really excited about learning electrical engineering and computer science. And you know, this is our dream. Um, so my name is Rishi. Um, I go to the same school, Middlesex County Academy, and um, I'm a junior. Like I'm, a, I'm a rising senior now. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So our project is a drone that sprays pesticide on small farms, and it autonomously does so, which means that it can go um, with no user input except for the area it needs to spray, and then take care of spraying that area for pesticide. So it saves time for the farmer, decreases the chance of the farmer getting sick because of the pesticide, decreases the waste of pesticide, and is a much more efficient and cheap way to do pesticide spraying for small farmers. Normal technologies cost $100,000, for example, a tractor will cost $100,000. On the other hand, for like uh, production for this would theoretically cost around $4,000, and a retail cost would be about $12,000. So it's a big advantage in terms of cost, efficiency, and health. So it's really a huge innovation on that front. Uh -huh. um, also, um, another one of the main innovations is that we have a spray boom that goes in between crop rows and we use a side spray. So um, that, that's how it uses pesticide more efficiently because um, compared to like spraying just from the top, a lot of the pesticide is wasted, a lot of it gets blown away, a lot of it doesn't reach the target. So side spraying is much more efficient. What makes that possible is the computer vision technology that takes the crop rows and then goes in between them. And that navigation is incredibly exciting um, and use a lot of both machine learning and image processing techniques involved. That's awesome. What would you say was one of the biggest roadblocks you ran into while designing this? Okay, base roadblocks. Um, I think weight would yeah, be one of the weight, big things. Uh, weight capacities. So octocopters and like multi rotors don't scale up perfectly. So um, that's the reason that we're considering um, going to a helicopter because it, it scales up much better and it has a much higher lift to weight ratio. Or possibly even a fixed wing aircraft because fixed wing aircraft can carry significant payloads greater than what we have. Well, we can only carry half a gallon. And that works for a small farmer because he's not going to have a huge farm. But if you want to scale this up, you move to a fixed wing aircraft and you're going to get a much better system overall. Uh -huh. And but, you know, go, uh, ahead, and go actually, ahead. So, but for the purpose involved and for the target market, this is the best solution. Sure, sure. How did you guys delegate duties amongst your group? Okay, so that's actually a very interesting question. Um, largely because for us, um, we had a few students who were interested in everything, and a few students who were interested in making sure that a few specific sections of the drone were working really well. Um, so we had separate teams, but as a whole, a lot of us worked on everything. Uh, for example, I know the drone forward to back, while Rishi is an absolute expert on the mechanical hardware. Um, I know a lot of the image processing, while I don't really know as much of the mechanical hardware, but he knows all the mechanical hardware, I don't know much of the image processing. So a lot of give and take. We had 13 people, so a lot of people to work with. Cool. What would you say was your favorite part about the program and the invention process? Um, probably the favorite part is um, getting to work with a lot of really great engineers and like just reaching out to the community because um, like on our own we have our ideas, but like we don't really know what's like what we can do, like what's feasible and like what's actually pro like producible. But um, when you talk to a real engineer, he gives you a whole nother perspective, and it's just it's very useful, and you just feel humbled, and it's so it's just a really good experience to be able to talk to like people that work in the field. Uh -huh. yeah. I can I have to concur on that. Although I have one other little caveat. Uh, one of our mentors, Dr. Senthil Kumar, uh, is an image processing expert. And we actually talked to him um, every other day, basically. We had him on the phone because we had questions about what to do with image processing. Because it's a fairly new topic for us we hadn't really encountered before. The other really exciting thing for me was the multiple near-death experiences I felt I had. Because as you might imagine, that drone's a bit of a behemoth. So you never know what it's going to do sometimes. Yeah. So the situation where uh, if he moves, let's say, this far, um, I was the drone was that far away from me. And it flew, started flying up indoors, and I was scared for my life. It was very exciting, a lot of fun afterwards, but it was an ex a scary experience. So eventually I'm looking back and it was my favorite part. So there's that. Uh -huh. And if you had to sum up the experience in one word, what would that word be? It's, it's a lot of work. It's, oh, one word. 
Um, awesome, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, exciting, although I guess for me everything is exciting, so there's that. But exciting, exciting is really important, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you guys for interviewing. Thank you, um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah.